Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 543. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and we got some news for you this week. So let's hop right into it. So first up is me plus you. <laughs> me plus you, Viking Fluttershy plushy goes for 12,500 euros at Ponycon Holland charity auction. Wow. Okay, let's see. Uh, Pony Convention charity auctions are one of the best parts of the fandom and are breaking overall record, 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 records, records hmm. at the beginning of the month. We have another milestone, a record sale of this Viking Fluttershy plushie from Me Plus You going for a whopping 12,500 euros. Um, no further detail is elaborated on this just plus she goes for that expensive amount so that's cool but we do see uh, some of the pictures here and we get to see that this plush is well done and so on but here uh first shy plushie in a viking variant made by me plush you.com bought at galacon this year she has additional uh, she has additionally a belt from at one v o oh, one violet rose I, I think so that's how you say it. so yeah there's some good info there so wait uh this plush was originally bought at galacon was it at a charity auction thingy or was a what you call this um yeah what was it at a charity auction or was it at a booth so let's see what the comments have to say um okay um, nothing much huh that guy what is that in u.s currency what you could do that on your own there's the currency converter online Oi, oi, oi. Anyway, awesome on the person who bought it and awesome for the charity to get that much of a boost for their charity thingy. Moving on. Uh, thank you, Brony. Fun re re uh, release. Sorry, uh, Brony, thank you, funds. Uh, release. Our work here is done. Well, right. The Brony, thank you, fun shirt. As a neat commercial, we crowdfunded way back in the days on the hub. I think that's the hub bro, TV network from Discovery and um, something I forgot. Uh, it, it was the it was the channel that kind of came up that um, really popularized shows like My Little Pony, French with Magic, um, Dan something and that dog I, I forgot but it was uh, a little chat shop one of those uh, shows too so basically it was it was a channel dedicated to mostly reruns and so on and also it was a channel to promote most of what you call this uh, most of Hasbro's cartoon thingies or toys uh, or branding and so on so it was a channel for Hasbro no, honestly, I'm not sure if they're up now. Probably not. I don't know. But anyway, um, <clears throat> and eventually went on to become a full-fledged charity over the years. As things slows down, they've decided it's time to move on. Get the full press release below. <clears throat> okay, I haven't read through this one yet, so sorry if I stutter or slur some words. Twelve and a half years ago, the Brony Thank You project was launched with the goal of putting a thank you ad on the hub and supporting toys for tots. A bit under a year later, we became an IRS recognized 501c3 charity organization as the Brony Thank You Fund. A lot has happened since then we endowed a permit 
per permanent per permanent animation scholarship at Cal Arts. We donated close to one hundred and fifty K to the Dana Harbor Harbor Cancer Institute. We put out nearly a dozen charity calendars featuring some of the finest professional and amateur artists in fandom, including show staff. Wow. We personally met thousands of amazing fans at RoniCon and the uh, and the regional. It's been a long, while satisfying ride, but it, but at last, it is. Drawing, uh, drawing to an end. When BronyCon ended, we lost our major fundraising venue where we sold over half our calendars every year. We sold, give me a second, sorry about that, I need to mute my phone. Alright, anyway, uh, where were we get? Uh, we sold, uh, soldier on going to more regional conventions instead, but the cost to revenue ratio was just wasn't as good. The nail on the coffin was the pandemic, when we had to send over 800 cal uh, calendars to dump for the last few years. The fund has been riding on idle, taking in occasionally donations from via PayPal or the corporate match, but not really active anymore. This spring, the board of directors met and formally voted to this dissolve the fund. We have been in the process of winding down operations since then, uh, culminating with the closing of our bank account this week. The balance, a whopping and uh, is being sent to Cal Arts in uh, Cal Arts to increase the balance to the Derby Hoop Scholarship in character animation. I like to personally thank everyone who has helped out during the years, the volunteers who set being tables for hours at conventions, the many artists who contributed to the calendars, our board members who helped steer the direction of the funds, the vendors who participated in our buck cancer button program, and of course our creative talents who made MLP FIM a reality in the first place. Not to mention all of you who forked over your hard won bits to help good causes. It has been my honor and privilege to work with so many generous and talented ponies and I will miss the wonderful experience that occurred along the journey. Signing off, James Codebroni Turner, President the Brony Thank You Fund Incorporated. Ah man, yeah. Oh that that hit me a bit harder than I would expect it and yeah they give a lot of good reasons there one of the few two that i that stands out to me was a brony con ending and also the pandemic those, those two really took a toll on the finance for the charity also when you read what they had to say also it's just that Going to conventions on a regular basis, like they say regional, but you have to also think about, okay, um, I'm going to Everfree Southwest, I'm going to uh, the one in Texas, oh, I'm going to the one in Baltimore and so on. There, there, there's so many conventions going on and having to, okay, let's just say even if you don't go there personally, you have your representative go there. Maybe you send Billy Jim Bob who lives in Texas and you say, okay, Billy, you need to sell as many as, as many calendars as you can at the 
convention space. Could you do it? Uh, could you do it? And Billy Jim says, "Yeah, I can." Now you have to send boxes and boxes of calendars to Billy Jim to sell. And yeah, shipping is a uh, ordeal to itself. Even let's just say that even if it manages to reach Billy Jim in on time, how much is that going to cost you? And let's just say that's the just uh, sorry. That's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is that box could have gone missing, and Billy Jim has no calendars to sell. And the Bruni Thank You Fund is um, what you call this out of luck, no item to sell because the calendars were missing and somehow ended a thrift store. It, it could happen. It it, it happened with a flush. So. The point is, convention, uh, BronyCon went, uh, BronyCon ended, their biggest revenue there was kind of dead, and moving on to with the pandemic, that took out a lot of time for quote-unquote convention going, probably, okay, let, let's just say this, let's just say that, even with no, con- sorry, no pandemic they could have gone to conventions like they mentioned they do going to regionals and so on that could have sustained them for a while before coming back to the same conclusion of oh no we ran out of money because we had to go to convention and that takes a pretty good sum of money to do so yeah i think pandemic did affect it them sorry i think pandemic did affect them a lot but it's just speeding up to the inevitable oh i'm i sound like a baby downer right now oh man but still thank you for the thank you brony fun it it was an experience the idea for them was just to put up an ad on the hub and it evolved into this awesome charity program thingy where they once they, they had a scholarship at Cal Arts. Uh, I think Cal Arts is California Art School, something like that. And they even have a scholarship called the Derpy Hoof Scholarship in Character Animation. That is just insane in my book. So, thank you for being there, guys. And yeah, it's just awesome. Anyway, let's move on to the last news for the week. Let's hope it's a cheerful one. Haha! <laughs> Future Bad Pony episode. Opaline Origins and History of Equestria Reveal in Mystery Mysterious G5 PDF. Yay! We have some very interesting uh sorry, we have uh, we have something interesting very we have something very interesting appear on today on 4chan. So, as always, take it with a grain of salt until we get some kind of official confirmation. A PDF going on into detail over 36 pages has revealed a bunch of interesting information on the world of G5. The world of G5 Equestria, along with stuff we already known about each of the characters and location we got across Make Your Mark and Tell Your Tale. Just uh, head down for breakdown. Alright. Some interesting points. I think this is a short summarization for the 36 pages long document. Alright. So, as always, like Seth said, is it Seth? Yes, Seth. So, like Seth mentioned, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, this could be real or not real. Uh, we'll just have to use our better judgment. So anyway, Equestria's history, including the Alicorns, Alicorn land of Kairos, the the Opaline was annoyed picking Celestia and Luna to go out and lead the opposed uh, as lead and lead as opposed to her. Due to the superiority of Alicorns over the other three races, 
<clears throat> all right we kind of got that remember hearing that open line was a bit jelly that pia and lulu got picked all right no problem far like splitting the main six up to far like splitting the main six up into the three pony race cities we ended up with and meeting annually to recharge the crystal and keep magic around while making in invisible bills to protect against opaline the, this tradition eventually died out which lead to the complete severing of the race <clears throat> Okay, um, for that point, I, I got no idea. That sounds pretty fictional. Why would Twilight split up the main three, the main six into groups? And it, it just raises so many questions. Why would she do that? Like, isn't her gimmick all about unity and whatnot? And splitting the tribes up, like, what happened to the Dragonkin, the Kirins, the uh, Hippogriffs and so on? And the Griffins and the Changelings? Well, what happened to them? That, that one sounds very strange. Maybe, maybe it's, I don't know, like I said, green salt. Uh, moving on. Plans for future pony realm exploration include Aurora ponies, sea ponies, tropical ponies, Neo color and bioluminescent flutter ponies with butterfly wings and bat ponies who had gone spooky, uh, who had a goth spooky appearance. I'm so disappointed we didn't make that so that far. All right, um, let's see. Mm, there's a lot of additional ponies. I can see why they didn't expand on that idea with Aurora ponies, sea ponies, and tropical ponies. Uh, Aurora ponies could be crystal ponies, I think, just re renamed. Sea ponies is the hippogriff, if I'm not mistaken. Probably. Yeah, but man, like, you, you already established sea ponies exist and they're technically hippogriffs. Uh, and then like what tropical ponies neo color and bio we we don't really need that in addition the ponies were, no we we don't need that bad ponies there's all there's already uh fandom lore that they exist and so on so something canon would be really nice for that and last on the list kairos itself could have been explored which was sort of a Mount Olympus style aesthetic and according to the document would explain a lot of unexplored lore from G4 with the original Celestia sorry, with the origins of Celestia and Luna. I don't know how I feel about that one. I do like the idea of a Mount Olympus kind of setting for the upper echelon. To be honest, if you introduce something like that into the show, it feels like you're just downplaying the mystery of where do they exist, where did they exist, how did they exist, and what was the reason for them to be there in the first place, and so on, blah, 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 blah. And I don't know, like, this would be one of those cases where if you do this you raise so many questions of why didn't the uh ponies from uh skyros came down and help the ponies in their time of need why didn't the ponies from skyros stop uh opaline when she went too far and so on and so on, and so on? So there's a lot of questions being raised by this. And I, I, I guess 
you can say that, oh, we're going to be exploring uh, this idea, that idea. Make this idea work with that idea. And we'll kind of explain why, uh, how G4 did their thing and on and they lead up to G5. I mean, there's a lot of things going on in between. But having an omnipotent figure kind of like Steve Zeus or so, whatever, having, having that kind of power dynamic character in the show makes the show feel a bit I don't know cheap I, I think it's cheap in my personal opinion but granted that I haven't read any of the comics I haven't went further into the show so I got no idea this is just my opinion as of watching the first special um, what would you call this the first uh, make your mark special so yeah, I'm I'm on that episode now. So probably going further, everything makes sense. But as for now, I, I feel like nah, probably raised so many things that it makes it just more more of a headache. Oh boy. Hey, anywho, uh, I think that's the show for this week. Let's switch to this. So what have I been doing my week? So this week has been very interesting because uh, my LGS had a event with the local government to do some kind of hobby event. So what they did was they had space at the local library where they set up shop for them and other vendors to peddle their goods. Uh, personally, for my LGS, which is Alexandria Bookstore, they didn't really sell anything. They just set up booths for uh, Warhammer painting, uh, Magic the Gathering learning sessions, and also D&D sessions, like short, short, uh, thirty-minute D&D sessions where you get to get the gist of how to how, how do you play this and so on. And also on the day itself, there were tournaments, like um. We had the Magic the Gathering Commander Grand Melee tournament, which I hope I won, but just one one turn away, my friend, one turn away. But in the end, um, one of my other friends took it, uh, took the crown, and got gold, or so on. Um, infuriatingly enough, I was the second person out. <sighs> that hurts a lot. That that really hurts a lot. But still. Uh, learning experience, <laughs> learning experience. I, I, I say that. Uh, yep. With every win and loss, it's a learning experience to be better. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, had a, uh, after loss, I played with some kind of casuals with other people. It was a lot of fun getting to learn, um, get getting to stay with other people and getting to have fun, uh, seeing how certain next functions and so on. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. But um, other than that, uh, there's a day two, which is today, um, the 27th. I'm recording this, but I ain't going because I, I feel tired and I just want to take five. I did my part yesterday, so probably today was just a lot of talking, a lot of um, panels and whatnot. Probably I should have went, went but didn't feel didn't really feel like it, but anywho, um, let's move on to the end. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmtrgmail dot com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at dmbs show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Hanzo. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and myself, Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You have been really awesome. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the BS Show. See ya!